pastor of this wonderful growing fellowship of believers here in downtown Hopewell, Virginia. If you're a guest with us this morning, thank you for coming out and checking out our church. It means the world to us. I hope you've already been greeted warmly. Uh, if I have not got a chance to meet you, please stop by. I'll be out in the hallway after service. It would be just my privilege to be able to thank you personally for coming and see how we can minister to you and your family. Here at Beacon Hill Church, our mission is pretty simple. We want to be the light of Christ into a dark world. Everything that we do is designed to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Uh, as a matter of fact, everything that we do is designed to, like, to get us out of our comfort zone. And, and if you are new here, you will get our tagline pretty quickly, which is what, church? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Everything we do is designed to get you out of your comfort zone so that the Holy Spirit can use you. And, and naturally, we don't get out of our comfort zones naturally, do we? We, we naturally kind of get into that little ball and, and into the place that we're comfortable. But what happens is when we get out of our comfort zone, we don't realize that the Holy Spirit can do abundantly more than we can ever do on our own. And we are the ones who are blessed. And so one of the ways that we do this, and one of the many ways that we do this is during our invitation time here at Beacon Hill. Right after I finish my sermon the next couple of hours, we'll be having a time where we will... books and I've got time to preach them all, okay? So look, one of the ways that we do that at Beacon Hill is during our invitation time, we have a time where we invite you to come and just lay your burdens down. Whatever you've got going on in your life, maybe something in the message pierces your heart here that you're about to hear. Maybe you've got some burdens. I don't know about y'all, but I've had a tough week. Have you had a tough week? Anybody here been through a lot of junk this week? I mean, there's just been some times this week where, I mean, it's been very heavy. Very heavy. And so maybe there's something that you need to do just to lay it down. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you here to see. Maybe you just need to get down the altar and just pray. But one of the things that we do to get out of the comfort zone here at Beacon Hill is when, you know, when I grew up, it was only the pastor that would receive you. Anybody remember those days? Just the pastor come down. And then when I served in a larger church, uh, we had three pastors that would receive people. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But what, when I look at my Bible, I don't see where it is only the pastor that can pray for people. As a matter of fact, when I look at my Bible, it encourages all people to pray at all times. And so one of the ways that we get out of our comfort zone is we have a team of people that will be down here to, to pray with you. And, and, and look, these are people that have gotten out of their comfort zone. Some people are prayer warriors, yes. Some people are literally getting out of their comfort zone. Matter of fact, some of their most deep prayer time when they first get up here is that someone would actually not come up to them. All right? And so I, I'm telling you, they want to be used for God's glory. And so some of them have actually developed into prayer warriors just through being on the prayer team. And the way that I tell people in our church is how can you possibly get out of your comfort zone to pray with people out in this lost and broken world if you're not willing to get out of your comfort zone to pray with people right here inside the church? And so this morning, I, I want to preach on prayer. It's one of my favorite topics to preach on in all of the Bible. So ladies and gentlemen, it's preaching time. If you would, go ahead and grab your Bibles and open them up with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, where we will be studying verses 1 through 5 this morning. If you do not have a copy of God's Word with you today, just raise your hand and uh, these Beacon Hill team members will bring a copy of God's Word for you to use. And if you do not have a copy of God's Word at home, please take it with you as our gift to you this morning. We consider it a privilege to get the Word of God into people's hands. We've been able to give out over 150 Bibles since we started the church. And man, I would like to get that out all the time, right? And we're thankful for our friends at Claremont Baptist Church who provided these Bibles to us. We are not in competition with other churches. We we, we work together for the glory of God. So we're thankful for them. If you uh, need a copy of today's sermon, there are sermon manuscripts that are being handed out. You're welcome to grab one. We have about 15 copies that we bring every week, but you can also get them by subscribing to us by email. Uh, just send us a message on Facebook or give us your email, and you will get copies of the sermon weekly or until you block us, whichever one comes first. All right. If you're able, please stand in honor of reading God's holy word this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The Word of God says this. Finally, brothers, 
Pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you. And that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I want to thank you for the power of your word to change lives. Lord, I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit just takes over this place. Lord, that the Holy Spirit allows me to proclaim the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ as I ought with boldness, with clarity, and conviction of speech. But Lord, the hearts of the hearers would receive the word. Lord, whatever's going on today, may we clear out the cobwebs and, and just be ready to hear the word of God and make changes that are necessary in our lives. Lord, I pray that if someone is here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that today will be the day of salvation for them. Lord, may I decrease now and you increase as I preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seen. I am entitled this sermon this morning, Moving the Gospel Forward. Moving the Gospel Forward. I, I attended a conference this week. It was sponsored by the Southern Baptist Convention. So the stats I'm going to give you um, come from their convention, their denomination specifically. But when it was an evangelism conference called Engage 24, and, and it was just meant to encourage us and to, to, to equip us to be more evangelistic. And, and when I went through these stats that they gave us, this is what they said. They said, and I, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was something like this, that 50% of all Southern Baptist churches baptized no one in the year 2017. No one. And then, and then it kept going up to, to where they said this, that 83% of Southern Baptist churches baptized nine or fewer people in 2017. And I just said that, it just broke my heart because there's so many people that need to know about Jesus Christ, but what we're seeing is while the population is increasing, the, the people being reached in the gospel of Jesus Christ are decreasing. And so then they, they gave stats us all on Twitter this week, but the North American Mission Board said, just because of the population increase that is happening, we need, catch this, 1,900 new churches every year. We need to start 1,900 new churches every year just to keep up with the population demand. And that's just here in North America. So here's some good news for you. The Southern Baptist started 4,000 churches last year. 4,000 churches. But here's the sobering news. 3,700 churches closed last year. That's a net gain of 300 churches. And so you've got to ask yourself, what is the problem? Why is this happening? And I think the reason is, is that the church has gotten increasingly inward focused instead of being obedient to the command to go and make disciples of all nations. Just as it was with you. We've been going through 
2 Thessalonians for a couple of weeks here at Beacon Hill. We just walk right through books of the Bible verse by verse. We've seen how Paul first kind of corrected some uh, errant teaching that was going on amongst them, how uh, dealing with the, the second coming and the Antichrist. And then last week we, we see how he encouraged them to stand firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And quite frankly, that would have been a good letter in itself. Amen. Just to sit there and share the second Thessalonians, this would have been good. He could have wrapped this all up. But the church of Thessalonica and the church of America today need to hear the rest of this letter. See, they got so focused on what was going on inside their own little bubble that they lost sight of the kingdom focus. The same goes for us today. So I want us to see how we need to make a commitment to prayer in our lives. So after pouring in them, Paul shows them about the commitment to prayer. And we see some beautiful things here in this scripture. The one thing that I want you to see first in the commitment to prayer is that you are never going through so much that you can't pray for someone else. Amen. Right. You're never going through so much that you can't pray for somebody else. Is it wrong to ask for prayer? No. But so many times we, we get so caught up and we, we're, we're always asking for prayer and we don't realize that somebody else is going through something even more dramatic than we're going through. Amen. So don't get so caught up in yourselves that you forget that someone else needs prayer. So you know, our community groups are designed to pour into one another, to literally be what the, the body of believers is. That is to be able to lay down your burdens, not to judge people, but to encourage them and to lift them up. And the best way I know how to do that is through prayer. So, I ask you to take time to pray for someone today. That's right. It's a beautiful edification that we should pray for one. You will often be the one who is blessed when you get out of your comfort zone and ask how you can pray for someone else. Amen. This week, I, I, I made a phone call to a, a pastor who's, man, you'll be astounded the amount of pastors who are leaving the ministry weekly. They're hurting. The pastors, I mean, I, I tell you, I covet your prayers. I covet your prayers as your pastor. It's been a tough week. I'm not going to lie. We had someone that we just baptized die. We, we, we've, we've seen battles that it's spiritual warfare. And I need your prayers. You know what? There's a lot of pastors that are just giving up and throwing in the towel. And I talked to one of those pastors this week. And I called to encourage him. He's been going through so much and he was just hurting and, and I called just to encourage him and you know, and that's all I wanted to do. That was the only purpose of my phone call was just to encourage him. And, you know, after I got done praying with this pastor, they said, how can I pray for you? Mm. How humbling that is. That's how humbling that, regardless of how much you've got going on in your life, you can take time to pray for someone else right. because I don't know about right. you. That's right. Talking to God about it is better than gossiping about it. Yes. That's right. So I pray that we can be serious about prayer. Second thing I want you to see about making prayer a commitment in your life is that you are never above the need for prayer. Yes. Paul is one of the most successful people that I've ever read about in all of the Bible. Just read through the book of Acts and you will see what God allowed Paul to do. It's amazing, even more so, if you see what he did before he came to Christ. Yet God... Used Paul to do some amazing things for the gospel. He he broke barriers for the gospel of Jesus Christ like no one's business. And what was the secret to his success is that he never lost sight of his dependence on God. He knew that it was God who was in charge, and he just wanted to be faithful, church. You never reach a place in your Christian walk where you have progressed beyond the need for prayer. You look through the Bible and you see Paul, and it's in my manuscript. I won't go through all of the instances, but when you walk through the letters of Paul, what you see is a consistent asking for prayer that he would fulfill his gospel or obligation. Philippians 1.19 says, For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Romans 15, 30 through 32, I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. I ask you this morning, how dependent are you on God? 
See, it's been Charles says it like this. The things that you pray about are the things that you trust God to handle. And the things that you do not pray about are the things that you can think you can handle on your own. Make prayer a priority in your life and not simply a religious duty. We are foolish if we assume the work of God can be carried forward without prayer. So you've got to make prayer a priority in your life. But Paul goes on in this verse 1 and we see that not only is it a priority in his life, we see the purpose of his prayer, but he makes prayer a priority to get the gospel message out. Paul had a lot of stuff going on in his life. But his request simply wasn't for himself. His prayer was that he could continue to get the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ out and out fast. His priority in prayer was not about himself, but about his Jesus. Did he have problems? And you look through, you look through the Bible, and Paul got beat up. He, he, he got literally killed. And every time I can just picture him crawling out of the city limits to the next town. And you know what he did? He got up and he kept on preaching Jesus, folks. Every step of the way. And that's the our attitude as well. Even when you don't feel like it, keep preaching Jesus. When the devil hits you, first thing you want to do is hit the devil in the mouth with the word of God, and then you want to keep on preaching Jesus. Because it's important that this world knows the word of God. Because I say it consistently in this church, I don't care if they know who we are as long as they know who he is. The word translated rapidly means that, that we need to be getting the word of God out on a consistent basis. This may come as a culture shock to the American church, but do you know that Christianity is not a one day a week thing? We are to be messengers of the gospel of Jesus Christ 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Everything we do should be about getting the gospel message out. May we never forget that it's the word that changes lives. You know, I tell people all the time, I, 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 I don't want people to come in here and say anything about Michael Moore. You can know, trash me. You can do whatever you want to there. But I want people to leave here saying, that word is powerful. Yes. You know, when, when Paul left the church at Ephesus, when, when he left the church at Ephesus, he had, he had the elders that were crying. They were going to miss him because they knew that he, they would never see him again. But if you read the scripture in Acts, you know what they missed most? They missed the word of God that he preached. May we be that passionate about the word of God because we understand that it's the word of God that changes lives. And we see here, as Warren Wearsby said, too much Christian work these days is accomplished by human pleas and promotion and not by the Word of God. The people don't need more frills. They need the Word of God. That's what this world needs today. We have turned the church into a circus. May we bring it back to the Word of God. Paul said, pray for me that I would proclaim the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ as bold as I should. Are you asking God to help you get the message out? Are you praying to God for, for, for to bring people into your life to share the gospel message with? Are you getting out of the bed in the morning and saying, God, send me somebody today to share the love of Jesus with? Because I tell you, if you do, He will. He will bring somebody into your life that you can share about the love of Christ. And definitely, if you pray it, then you need to keep your eyes open because God's going to do His part. Amen. So keep your eyes open to what God has for you in your life. But here's the deal. If it was simply as, as, as praying for God to send you somebody in your life, that would be awesome. But I can tell you, I learned the hard way. Back in high school, just because I asked a girl out doesn't mean she was going to say yes. I learned rejection the hard way. And so when you pray, not only do you need to pray for God to use you to get the gospel message out, you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to work in the hearts of the ones who you're going to share the gospel to. 
The word honored means valued and admired for its transforming power. Paul mentioned the Thessalonians. Uh, you are proof. You are proof of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know how I know that the gospel of Jesus Christ works today? It's because you're living proof of the changed power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got examples all through this room. There are some jacked up people in this room. Amen. Amen. It's just thing. Speaking, one of you is the worst person in this room. I mean, really, you're really horrible. But yet God changed you. God changed you. That's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, it says in Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is active, sharper than any two-edged sword. My God is alive today and he's capable of changing even the worst of these and using them for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So are you praying for God to send you somebody? And then if you're praying for the work of God to make its way into the hearts of the hearers. We must continually pray to Christ for us to be bold and for the Spirit to do the work. But look what verse 2 says. This one hit me the hardest this week, church. It says pray for the gospel to move forward unhindered. Scripture says that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith. See, while verse 1 shows Paul's humility in seeking Christ, verse 2 shows us the reality in serving Christ. You know, if you step up for Christ, you will face opposition. Oh, yeah. Has anybody ever gone through spiritual warfare because you've taken a, a step of faith in Christ Jesus? Has anybody made fun of you for your faith? Have you ever gone through trials and battles because you, you want to follow Jesus and other people are trying to hinder your growth? Has that ever happened to you? Because if you step up for Jesus, you will face trials. But what really got me, what really got me about this passage is this. If you look at what Paul is saying, he's not talking about the lost world out there that's going to hinder the advancement of the gospel. He's not talking about that. He's talking about religious people from outside the church and within the church. You know, the greatest obstacle I have had in my ministry career has not come from people outside the church but within the church. J. Vernon McGee says it like this. I find that the spreading of the gospel is hindered more by people in the church than anything else. No liquor industry, no ballroom, no gangster ring has ever attacked me at least since I have ever known about it. But I've had so-called saints in the church attack me. You know, I remember at my first pastor I, uh, we had baptized, before I got there, we baptized three people in three years. And um, I remember through God's mercy and grace in the first year of being there, we got to see 40 people come to Christ. I mean, yes. I mean you, you would think that, I mean, like, it's like right now here, was that dead? I mean, you should celebrate 40 people come to Christ. Yes. Yes. You know what I heard from within the church? He said, we've lost our church. We, 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 I mean, these are leaders in the church who would say, we, we've lost our church. Why do we have to change for them? There was little joy in seeing lost people come to know Jesus Christ. And Paul teaches us a lot about how to handle the naysayers who say they know Christ, but might be in for a wake-up call on Judgment Day. He says, let Christ fight your battles. Let, let Christ fight your battles. You keep on serving Jesus. Don't feel the need to try to win every battle that comes your way. Paul simply asked for prayer from the saints to pray for deliverance. You know, he didn't take these attacks personally. He considered it a spiritual matter, so therefore he gave it to God. When somebody comes at you and tries to knock you down, the first thing you need to do is keep going down and get on your knees and talk to God about it, church. That's the first thing you need to do. And then when you go through those battles, you need to pray for God to strengthen your faith. This is what it says in verse 3. It says, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. See, attacks from your friends and your family of faith and for those who act spiritual can hurt you. I've gone through times in my life where serving the Lord has not been about Come on, wait. It, it, it's Come been on, painful at times, church. Come on, Pastor. But you know what? No one can take away from me the joy in Christ Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. No one can take away the joy that I have in Christ Jesus. So even when I'm tired, I know that the Lord is faithful. Amen. Even when church people are faithless, I know that Christ is faithful. Amen. So I'm thankful for that. 
While people are faithful to times, God is always faithful. Listen to me. God has made a covenant between himself and humankind, and he sealed it with the blood of Jesus Christ. If God said it, you can tell it. Knowing this truth should instill confidence in your life to be able to boldly move the gospel forward. Paul gave strong affirmation that God would accomplish inner stability and our protection for the Christian. Despite persecution, despite evil men, despite saving himself, God's commitment to his children assures us that no one shall prevail. Now look at this. This is the difference between us and a prosperity church, all right? We know that the evil will not prevail, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to go through hard times in your life. That doesn't mean you're not going to get beat up for sharing the gospel. That doesn't mean that, that you're even not even going to be immune from being killed for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that does mean that whatever Satan can do to you, the worst thing that can happen to you today is that you wake up with Jesus Christ. In your faith. So it should encourage you. So this is what it says. Pray for directions. Verses 4 through 5. If you know the Lord is faithful, you need to pray for direction. It says that we have confidence in the Lord about you. That you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. I have confidence. I have confidence that God can use each and every single one of them. Daddy, right? Yes, God. Do I have confidence in you? No. But I have confidence in Christ in you. There's a major difference. Do you think that is right? See, I was in Boston, and I've told this story before, but we've had so many new people. I was in Boston on a subway train and with a mission trip. And I decided to share this the gospel with, you know, just your typical Boston dude, man. He was just, if there was a stereotypical Boston dude, this was it, man. And he was mean. And I just had to share the gospel with him. And I was using these gospel tracks. And he literally took my gospel tracks and ate them. I'm like, this is not going well at all. And then he takes his fist and puts it up in my face. And, and I, I was pretty sure that my, my whole faith family, including my daughter and my wife, were going to watch me get beat to a pulp right here on the subway train. And you know what? Every single person on that subway train was watching. Every single person was watching. I know this because nobody was helping. That's for sure. <laughs> so I was sitting there and, 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 I, and I didn't know what happened. And somebody said, let's pray. Let us pray. And we prayed. And you know, it's like the Holy Spirit came down on this man like we've never seen before. This angry man who was about to lead me to a pulp just came to a bush right there in the subway car. This man was on the way to a rehab center. He struggled with addiction in his life. And as I was walking out of that car, he says, don't leave me. Don't leave me. And I looked at him and I said, James Joseph Robertson III. I said, I believe that you can overcome these addictions in your life. He says, you mean it like a little kid. He said, you mean it? And I said, James, if you allow Christ to take hold in your life, I believe you can conquer whatever this world throws at you. And this man who had his fist in my face just minutes earlier was hugging me and wouldn't let me go and cry. You know, I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget that moment. I pray for James all the time. And I don't know what's happened to him, but I know this, that if he's let Christ get a hold of his life, he's a lot better than he was before we met him. And I ask you this the morning. It says in the scripture, you got to let the Lord direct you. Steps. You've got to see people as God sees them, not as who they are, but who they can be in Christ Jesus. Does anybody have a testimony of how far you've come to Christ? Of where you've been? Praise Jesus where you're going. So I don't know if you're here today, and I don't know what you're going through in your life. Maybe you have slipped, maybe you have fallen back, and, and, and you just need Jesus to help you through it. This is what that invitation time is for. Maybe you're tired of fighting the battles of yourself and you've never fully given your life over to Christ. This will be a time where you can come and just give your life to Christ. We'll tell you how. I'll tell you what. It's not based on doing good things or good works because that will lead you straight to hell. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's all we say. Romans 10 9 says it like this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised you dead, you shall be saved. That's not only a future reality, that's a promise for today for you. 
Maybe you need prayer for boldness to share the gospel with somebody that God's laid on his heart. Because I tell you right now, if you're praying right now, if you're listening to this message, God's putting somebody in your heart right now that you need to share the gospel with. And you just need to pray for obedience to have that done. God will give you the words to say. God will equip you if you just get yourself out of the way. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask you to respond. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I pray you for the word of God. I thank you for the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to change lives. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of prayer. Lord, because of the blood of the Lamb, we have access to you. We don't have to go to a temple. We don't have to, to go to confession. We can pray to you anytime, anywhere. That's the blessings of being in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that this church would take 